Hey everyone, you're listening to 10 Minute Scriptures. This is Tim with the Word of Life Church. I wanted to go today to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and I wanted to drop down to verse 3, actually. That's where I felt like I wanted to go today. Hope everyone is saved, walking in the will of God, and if you are, you are blessed, truly blessed in the Lord. Amen. So let's start reading the Word of God today. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his many blessings, and most of all, for that salvation that he gives us. Amen. And it, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, and it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his, his abundant mercy, and we need to show the that abundant mercy toward others. Amen. You know, that's one thing that's severely lacking in this world. Abundant mercy. Mercy toward others. Amen. There's too many. I've heard many stories. People told me many stories, many uh, testimonies and things that they've seen. Even people that have worked at large churches, how that church has shown a lack of mercy toward people that just come in looking for food or help. And they would turn them away. Not time. I haven't got time to go into the stories and details, but I probably told them before in my other videos. But and it's, uh, the people need a genuine help, and they just turned them away. Would not show them the least bit of mercy and help. Oh, but thank the Lord, He shows us abundant mercy, Amen. And we're to show others that mercy as well. But it says, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. A lively hope. Amen. We'd be lively people, friends. Amen. Lively. Energized. Ready to do the will of God. Lively to be able to show that abundant mercy. Show that there is still people willing to serve God in this, as I say, and I call it this evil, dark, fallen, worldly system. No, the world's beautiful, but it's ruled by the prince of the power of the air. God's still in control, amen. Let's not forget that. It's still his world. He's given us dominion over it, but the prince of the power of the air, Satan, of course. It's his show just for a little bit longer, He's running things behind the scene, the dark fallen powers and all that. You know, we know what we talk about that quite a bit in spiritual warfare. But we're to be lively. And we have a lively hope. It says by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's our hope. See, if that didn't happen, then we have no hope. If the Lord Jesus died on the cross and was put in that tomb and he did not raise from the dead on that third and appointed day, then we have no hope. But oh, by faith and others and other testimonies, I know he did. You know he did. There's some that don't believe that. Talks about even said it was reported this day that they were paying off the 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 the, the priests and everything. They were paying off the guards, saying that the guards come and over overcame the guards and took Jesus's body and said that they would. They would uh, secure the guards and uh, vouch for them just so that the resurrection wouldn't go abroad. Same still today. People saying all manner of things. Lord Jesus did not. Man, a man can't, re re can't resurrect from the dead. Oh, my. What are we talking about? Oh, my Lord Jesus did because he was God in the flesh. He said, no man takes my life, I give it willingly. He said, destroy this temple, speaking of his body. He said, on the third day, I will raise it again. <laughs> Amen. Woo. He said in verse 4, to an inheritance, we've got an inheritance. Amen. Incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. When you go on vacation, hallelujah, you reserve a hotel somewhere. 
And you expect that reservation to be there when you get there. Some people call ahead a few days in advance just to make sure that that reservation is still there. See, we don't have to do that. We know. We know by faith that that reservation is there. As long as we stay in the will of God and continue in the will of God until we're taken out of here. Until God says it's our time to take, to, for him to take us out of here. We've got to go out of here some way or another, either by the grave or the calling or catching away of the saints of God. We don't have to worry about it. He's got it. We're secured. We've got an inheritance. It fadeth not away. It's reserved for us. Just stay in the will of God, friends. Embrace that salvation. Hang on to it more than you hang on to anything in this world. Money, possessions, family, anything. That's your most prized possession that you have. But in verse 5 it says, Who are, and I love this, so listen to this, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh, hallelujah. He keeps us. He keeps us. But you do realize none of this stuff is forfeitable. We can walk out of the hand of God. So, brother, he, he, you saying he, he, who are kept by the power of God, he keeps us. That's right. But we can walk out of the hand, protective hand of God at any time. He doesn't armbar us and keeps us in that manner. We have still free moral reign over our life. We can still walk away from the hand of God if we choose. But see, I don't choose that path. I choose the path of the will of God, as you should as well. That way we can say, hey, I'm kept by the power of God. I'm walking in the will of God. I've got my reservation in heaven through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In verse 6, wherein we greatly rejoice. We should be greatly rejoicing each and every day, knowing this. Go to the house of God and greatly rejoice. It says, though now, for a season, for a season, if need be, you, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Yes, we do. Those temptations. But in verse 7, it said, Oh, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Which one of these days, the Lord Jesus, he is going to appear. I might not see it. You might not see it, friend. But he will appear one of these days. We may be gone. We may be, we may be in heaven. Some of us may be in hell. Better make sure of your salvation. It says in verse 8, listen to this. Whom having not seen, we believe by faith. We've not seen, but we believe by faith. Ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice <laughs> with joy unspeakable and full of glory. One more verse, verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. One of these days, I'm going to see. I won't need my faith. I won't need my hope anymore because I'm going to see. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't know today if you're saved or not, if there's any doubt, if the Spirit is drawing you to an altar of repentance, don't turn him away. Give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent from your sins. Ask the Lord to save you to come into your heart and forgive you for your sins and he will come into your heart and take up abode there ask him to save you and you will serve him the remainder of your days that's the salvation of your soul and he will if you're backslidden on the Lord you know the way back come back and ask for forgiveness don't let it go any longer if he's pricking your heart ask, ask him pleading with you to come back or come to the altar be it first time salvation or back to the Lord, don't turn him away. Amen. Because the days are drawing near. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. Pray for one another. Lift one another up in prayer.
Amen. This was 10 Minute Scriptures and Tim with the Word of Life Church. Take care and we will see you next time. Bye now.